Welcome, bros and bros fiends. My name's Albrick von Stollen, and today I'm gonna be reviewing all of Taisho Otomi Otogibanashi. Yes, it's happening. After all this time. Why? Because I'm a completionist, and this is one of my favorite anime from last year. Before things get very crazy, let's go! I've been busy with a couple of projects. One involves Blender and another involves Krita. The latter did give me a new avatar for YouTube and more will come out of this. I did say in my previous review that I'll be reviewing this anime in full and I'm doing it here and now. This anime was announced early last year and it got hyped in Japan despite the great unmentionable that's still going on. But. All that changed when the show was released back in October 9th, 2021. Watching this show had made me happy all over. So, what makes this show special? Let me count the ways. First, the story. The story was able to be close to the manga. Romantic, cutesy, and wholesome. So, what is the story of Taisho Tomio Togibanashi? It's about the story of Tamahiko and Yuzuki set in the early 1920s. Specifically, the ups and downs of their relationship. I had mentioned in my speculation video that it would be either a la Sailor Moon or Demon Slayer. One that has many creative liberties done to it or close to the manga. But, something had hit me. It's more a la Amai Goddess. While the anime was close to the manga, it had also skipped multiple chapters such as the Otaku chapter, the Art Club chapter, and the Shinden chapter. With Taisho Tome, the episodes follow the manga chapters and even include the .5 chapters such as 8.5 and 16.5. Given how the .5 chapters are the side stories of the main chapters, this is quite obvious. The link to that video will be in the description below. I can say this because the show had stopped short of chapter 30, which I'll talk about later. The animation is quite good. It does have its share of Sakuga scenes. For those not in the know, Sakuga means drawing pictures in Japanese. This term denotes moments in an anime where the quality of animation is quite awesome. While the term is usually attached to action animes such as Gundam the Below, Gundam Age, Gargantia on Verdwood's Planet, Demon Slayer, and Attack on Titan, Sokoga does happen outside of those anime as well. In Taisho Tome, the Sokoga seeds are in the opening segment, the opening theme, the headpad scene in episode 1, Tamahiko and Yuzuki going out in episode 3, Yuzuki embracing Tamahiko in episode 4, the kiss in episode 7, among others. The Sokoga scenes fit with the overall tone of the show. This is because the manga itself does lend to Sakuga scenes as well, such as the spring scene in chapter 4, Tamahiko making up with Yuzuki in chapter 12, and the first part of chapter 16.5. The kissing scenes are lewd! It leads to babies! This man, he approves of the lewd according to Kekaku! The sound direction in this anime is very good. This is especially seen with the opening theme where it promotes a healthy version of femininity as opposed to the likes of WAP. Unfortunately, I cannot put those songs and themes here due to YouTube copywriting all of those things. So instead, I will link those songs and themes in the description below for those of us who are interested. As for character designs, there's one thing that I notice about Karyoka Sana. The male love interest is taller than the female love interest. And for those people who get whiny over how I refer to female lead characters as female, all because people still treat BuzzFeed as a good thing in the year of our lore 2022, I'll keep using the term anyway. It's noticeable not just in Taisho Tomi where Tamahiko towers over Yuzuki, but in the other stories of Kiryoka Sana. In Showa Otome, the female lead is shorter than the male lead. The same is true in Shizuko wa Ore no Yome and Chitsuren Pet no Juisama. The cast looks like they're in the 1920s with most of them dressed in traditional Japanese attire. The characters are well written. 
Tamahiko is a really good character study of someone who has depression. He's lonely, despondent, and is suicidal. He's there in his house, laying down and rotting away. But, due to the influence of Yuzuki and, to a lesser extent, Tamako, he gets up and improves himself. He's shown to be a man of integrity, honesty, and dedication. I did mention before that I'll be making a separate deep dive into this in order to keep this review coherent and that's in the works. Yuzuki is quite kind-hearted, strong and empathetic. While it was revealed that in her origin in episode 12 that she was feeling down over the deal that her parents had done with Tamahiko's dad, she did end up liking Tamahiko. Much like with Tamahiko, I'll go into a separate deep dive into this as well. Tamako is the overly lonely girl who had no friends, was alienated from her family, and thinks that her brother Tamahiko hates her. But, due to Yuzuki's help, she manages to overcome this and even realized that Tamahiko had always cared about her. Ryo started off quite badly in the show for me because she reminded me of all those infidelity-centered soap operas here in the Philippines that have become the norm in the 2010s. That being said, her character development came after meeting Yuzuki and Tamahiko. Had she not gotten to really know the two, she would have ended up like those fling characters in those soap operas. She isn't just the big sister to her brothers, as she also acts like one to Tamahiko, Yuzuki, and even Tamako. The sure story siblings were touched by Tamahiko's kindness as Hakuru opened up to Kotori after he had befriended Tamahiko. With the world building, I've noticed something. It's quite decent. The way Japan was shown in both the show and the manga fits what the 1920s looked and felt like. A mix of tradition and modernity. The various characters are typically shown wearing traditional attire, going hand in hand with trains, cars, and modern buildings. It really fits with the 1920s Japanese aesthetic. Giving the Shiratori siblings the Kansai dialect shows us that Japan isn't necessarily a monoculture where everyone talks the same way. Other examples are Fat Gum from My Hero Academia and the cast of Lovely Complex. That being said, the show didn't go much into its explanations like in the manga because it won't fit in the anime. It's a difference in medium. In the manga, we see panels talking about the age of consent laws, the Great Kanto Earthquake, and how kids went to school in the 1920s. That being said, the anime didn't go into detail in writing but had shown the world building via the animation such as when Tamahiko had taken the entrance exam for high school and how people had reacted during the Great Kanto Earthquake. I do wish that the show had animated chapters 30 to 38.2 though. This was the foreshadowing that I had mentioned in my reviews. Why? Because this would have shown the audience why the Shima family has such a bad reputation among people, but this would have gone beyond the 12-episode limit that the show had done. This is where I'll be speculating. We'll either get a movie out of this, much like with how Demon Slayer had its entire movie out of that series' train arc, a season 2, or this will be skipped for Showa Otome. Making this into a movie would take 60 to 120 minutes in terms of story, and the way the chapters are adapted, those chapters could easily fit into a movie. But the show would have to be popular enough to do this. A season 2 would be too short because the episodes would be too few for the manga chapters unless things get expanded. Namely, Tamayo's strange behavior and how the show would handle Tamaki's death because Tamahiko in the show had returned to high school before the Great Kanto Earthquake, not after the earthquake like in the manga. If the events of chapters 30 to 38.2 get skipped for Showa Otome, then it would not be able to deal with Tamayo's behavior as the Taisho Otome manga does show more of her behavior and it does partly reflect into Tamayo's characterization in Toshoa Otome. I recommend the show because it promotes something different, something quite novel. Taisho Otome promotes things like family, 
hope and kindness over the cynicism and depression of our age. We live in a time where people are sad, lonely, and trying very hard to cope with the insanity around us all. Promoting kindness and family is quite new because we have shows which promote depression all in the name of realism. But we watch shows to be entertained and to better deal with the insanity around us, not be regularly reminded of how insane things are. While realism is a good guide to make a show coherent, it's not the end-all be-all of a story let alone an excuse for bad writing. This is why I recommend Tasha Otomi as a story. It doesn't solely rely on realism to tell a story. It also relies on showing the positive and negative parts of what it means to be a human. It doesn't solely dwell on negativity but shows us that there's good things in life too. This is something that we need especially in these trying times. Please like, share, and subscribe and it's gonna help. Bros and Brosophines.